for me, when I was there in Korea for the first three to six months, I was like, ah, oh, this is great. No yeah. parents. I'm also 15, so like, no parents. You have the rose colored glasses yeah. still on, and everything's new and exciting. Yeah. yeah. And then suddenly, after that, it was, wow, I feel so like fragile. <laughs> Thanks for coming. No, thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. I love doing laundry. Do you? Well, yeah. you're in the right place yes. for it then. You must have a lot only just coming in this morning. Yeah. Just flown in from? From Shenzhen. Okay, yeah. amazing. Nine hour flight. That's it's great. far, yeah, wherever great. you're coming from in the world yeah. to get into oh, Australia. Oh yeah, I hear that. I was like, <laughs> like, yeah, to Australia. It's no, always going to be like, at least six hours. I, it really is. I feel it. Well, just to get to the other side of the country itself oh. is six hours. Oh, really? Yeah, to okay. Perth is six hours. Well. Well, I'm glad that I'm here now. And I'm glad you are as well. Is it your first time here? Um, in Sydney, yes. Okay. Um, I was here for the first time in Australia last year, last year around this time uh -huh. um, in Melbourne. Okay, did yeah. you enjoy your time? Oh, I loved it. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, we're doing a tour, we have to come back. 100%. Were you just there for pleasure or were you... Um, we had a music festival that okay. we performed at and it was just like, you know, short set. And then uh, I explored the rest of the city and I was like, this is great. Yeah, and then Melbourne. the manager was like, we're doing a tour, so... Um, you want Australia on there? I'm like, yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. So it's your first headlining tour yeah. here. Amazing. Yeah. Do you think, I mean, you've, t you've had the show in Melbourne. Mm. The crowds will differ at all in mm. Australia compared to North America, Asia? Well, well, something that I'm curious about is that I don't think I've actually like fully like felt the whole, like what the Australian vibe is. Mm. Cause Melbourne was just like a short set. Mm -hmm. So uh, this time around, plus now it's my own show. Mm -hmm. Let's see what the Aussies got to bring. Yeah. And I'm like, and I'm also going to New Zealand too, which I haven't been to in like, what, 12 years. So okay. it's like well, a really long time. So I'm like, okay, let's, let's, let's see what it is. Totally, totally. Yeah. Do you get a lot of um, fans requesting you to come here? Yeah, like well, I always see in the comments that there's like, oh, please come, please come, please come. So. Um, it's really nice, at least with this tour, is that what uh, the goal of me and like my team was is just to like, just get back in front of the fans because mm -hmm. I've been doing this for like 15 years. Mm -hmm. So the whole point is to like, you know, if I've only just been in certain regions for so long, why not just even if it's quote unquote out of the way, like let's just put it in and like put a string through the the routing and try to figure out how this can work to yeah. at least you know just say hi to everybody and like you know again I have been doing this for a really long time. A hundred percent. If you had one thing that you would like people to know about you that may mm. not already know much about you, what would that be? Hmm. Oh, bringing in the hard questions. Yeah. <laughs> um, I feel like uh, as like as an artist, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like I'm a, I'm a person that just does kind of a little bit of everything. I've grown up just listening to all types of music and then when I got into K-pop, you know, it just got straight into the dance music. But um, I'm not just K-pop. I have a lot of different influences from like rock to um, hip hop to like acoustic indie music. So um, I think Amber Lou is just a chameleon mm -hmm. and uh, just does very different things in my own little silly way, I guess. You entered into the music world at 14, 15? Yeah, 14, 15. As a child, getting thrown into that space, that's, you know, because mm -hmm. so, most people at 15, they're going to mm -hmm. high school, they're with their mm -hmm. friends, they're with their parents. How do you nurture that child? I guess my question is twofold. How do you nurture that child at the time? And then now as an adult, how do you continue to nurture the inner child that was that mm. being thrust into the world back then. It's funny enough, I think that it's flipped. I think as a younger kid being thrown into that spotlight, I want to, like, I want to, like, be cool. I want to be an adult, you know? So you want to, like, come off older than you, like, actually are. Mm. But now that I'm older, it's like I'm reverting back. Like, what, what do I, what do I like? What did I... Uh, what do I feel, uh, find comfort in? And those were the things that I did as a child. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, I know there's a meme going around. It's like, you get adult money to do adult things, which is satisfying your inner child. So, um, but I, I feel like that, the reason why like that progression happened was because 
at such a young age, I didn't give time for myself to grow up. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't, um, like all my friends who went to college, I, I envied all my friends who went to college. I'm like, man, that college experience seems so cool. And like, yeah, like they're probably losing their brains with finals, but they're like going to parties and doing all these things. But then my friends who went to college are like, no, like we would much rather have your experience. So it's like, I'm like mentally battling with like, do I, like what, what what am I actually wanting from my life? Mm -hmm. I think as I went, because like uh, I do love music and I do love um, performing, but at the same time, th throughout that whole like adolescence, early twenties, mid twenties, it was very confusing because there was a part of me that just yeah that did want to be normal, that did want not just like you know there's that whole um, saying when you're like, really stuck in the industry for a long time, I think. Um, even like for even things like social media, when you're stuck on social media for so long, you start thinking a different way. When social media are, is a highlight of somebody's life, you start comparing your life to that. So I think at the same time in the industry, or even right now for me as well, it's like how to balance that out and like understanding what is normal for me what do i want for myself so it was a lot of therapy a lot of um taking time away and really just doing things that like you know i would i would like watch pokemon i was like why does this feel so nice to me today mm -hmm. and it is there's i think there is that comfort yeah. so um yeah i think to answer your other question about what am i doing to you know satisfy the inner child i think it's just to always stay curious mm -hmm and to let my like heart lead me uh, where it wants to go. Yeah. Because I, I feel like, you know, I, I'm a big kid and yeah. I'm okay with that. Well, there's no need to grow up. Why do we have to grow up yeah. and become, you know, you know, just because our age is yeah. somewhat older. Mm -hmm. I mean, I find that a lot of the time, even now I want to con continue to move into directions that excite me and yeah. bring me joy. And wh why do yeah. I have to settle for doing, you know, yeah. one certain thing when we can get in touch with those things that do yeah. bring us that, I don't know, that yeah. in, the inner child and awakening. Yeah. And I think it's really important to try and stay in touch yeah. with that. I also feel like a lot of uh, the time for me, it's, um, I used to bring in a lot of my hobbies into, like in, in front of the camera, like my running, my, uh, um, I, I think I tried cooking at one point, I'm really bad at it, mm -hmm. but it was, instead of like in video games as well. But now what I started doing is to find some balance in my life especially again with social media, is to really make hobbies and make them for myself. Mm -hmm. And really, I don't need to do something just to show somebody something. Mm -hmm. So I think that's kind of kept me a lot more sane than, than, uh, than before. Mm -hmm. And like really um, just doing things because I love it and not having to feel like I have to show everybody everything that I'm doing. 100%, yeah. definitely. Keeping these close to your chest yeah. and, and the moments that yeah. are in, because you don't have to share everything. Yeah, either. exactly. I think a lot of people get worked up and think they do have to, yeah. you know, give give their all. Yeah. But I've just started doing filming on a camcorder uh -huh. and my rule is that anything I film on the camcorder, I'm not yeah. allowed to share yeah. because that's for families. Mm -hmm. When I was 18 years old, mm -hmm. I moved to New York for modeling mm -hmm. and I was put into model apartments and it was a pretty mm -hmm. um, rigorous time yeah. of my life. And I'm curious because when I went away, I got so homesick and mm. I found that being apart from mum and like that affection yeah. was one of the hardest things I had ever have uh, to yeah. this day, like struggled with. Did you, yeah. how does it work with yeah. family and parents and being? Oh, good? did you feel that like, like the first like three months was like super exciting because you're like in a new mm. environment, but then suddenly you feel kind of just like unstable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think that like, for me, when I was there in Korea for the first three to six months, I was like, ah, oh, this is great, no yeah. parents. I'm also 15, so like no parents. You have the rose colored glasses yeah. still on and everything's new and exciting, yeah. yeah. And then suddenly after that, it was, wow, I feel so like fragile. Mm -hmm. Like though um, I've made new friends, but there are like, like food I think was something that was really hard for me to adjust to. I think my stomach would just wasn't used to it. Okay. So I think finding foods that would like comfort my stomach and then um, I feel like even s after a while sleeping on a different bed, it just kind of feels weird. Like right now I'm, I'm going from um, hotel to hotel and it's like nothing beats going home and 100%. laying on that bed. Yes, yeah. definitely, definitely. Yeah. I read that you and your mum spoke different language, well, mm. English and Mandarin. Mandarin, yeah. yeah. What does it look like growing up, not being able to 
have those conversations mm. and then now being able to talk to your mm. mom. So people. back then it was, Amber, let's go to uh, school. Okay, get in the car, complete silence, probably just I'll turn on the radio, drop me off, bye mom, mm. bye Amber, done. Yeah. And then pick me up from school, same thing. You want food? No? Okay, let me know. And then it's very simple yeah, things. Okay. Just like a yes, no, later, okay. Um, but I think when there was times when I definitely saw my mom where, because uh, she only spoke, my, my dad speaks fluent English. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I would see like my, my mom and my dad and like my sister and I like going to like, let's just for example, like some company thing that my dad had and um, everybody spoke English. My mom was just always very quiet. You know, just, you know, there to support and, and take care of my sister and I. And then later on, it would be more, um, I could tell that when I would ask about things like, Mom, like, what did you do as a kid? She would give very, very basic answers, but I could always tell that she wanted to say more, but, um, and she would try. But the moment that she would say something that I didn't understand, I, have a, I guess I have a look. And then she'd be like, never mind, never mind, you know? So it was like a lot of those types of conversations where you try it and then you're all like, I don't know how else to, how else to explain this to you. And then you kind of just like, ah, never mind. But now it's like, okay, mom, um, when I'm explaining like my album process to yeah. her, she's all like, oh, really? And that's what you do? I'm like, yes, I record. And then you take this and you take this beat and you go like this, 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 and this. She's like, oh, okay, cool. And then I would say something else and she's like, wait, I don't understand that. And I'd be like, okay, um, then I would actually be able to find words or a metaphors to kind of help her understand things. And I think like conversations that used to be like, maybe like 10 to 15 minutes long now are like two hours long. What a gift for your mom as yeah. well to be able to, I don't know, it must just be, you know, you have this child who you love more than anything yeah. in the world, but you can never quite get, mm -hmm. I mean, there, there is something to be said though about physical touch and communi yeah. communicating in that way, but to be able to yeah. understand your work. I think back then too, like, it would just be like, if I wanted to hug, I would just hug my mom. Mm. Now it's like, I can hug her, I can like, like, mom, I love you so much, and I wanna go here. I can just keep holding her, and it's just like, it's always accompanied with, I don't know, I have the option of accompanying it with a whole explanation that can make sense or not make sense. Mm -hmm. And it's, and she like, listens and she's able to understand me that's and that's amazing. what's I think that's something I can never like I, I'm so glad that like sometimes when I'm like in China working I'm like losing my mind because I don't understand anything and I'm like trying to pick up on things but it's like it's really worth it so you've said that one of your biggest fears uh, is being alone mm -hmm. you don't like to be alone do you think that stemmed from having been surrounded by people mm -hmm. in within your career and hmm. let me let me actually edit that I think my, my worst fear is being alone, but I think that being alone is by being not understood. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think when I was growing up, especially because I looked like this, mm -hmm. people would assume that I was a certain way, which was not who I was. Like I was a bad kid. I, you know, wanted to create trouble. You know, it happens a lot. And like people's, uh, like my friend's parents would like, take them away like it, it would it would just be like this whole thing and I, I always had that growing up that people would always assume that I was a troublemaker trying to um, just do bad things and become a become a bad influence when actually I was just there to chill and have fun and had none of that on, on my mind mm -hmm. um, so uh, sorry what was the question again well your biggest fear being <laughs> yes being alone. yeah so I think when people don't give people a chance to kind of talk about their intentions or talk about their thought process. It, it does get really lonely just to be like, oh, I just assume you're a certain way and mm -hmm. I'm not gonna even let you have your, your, your say in it. Mm -hmm. So um, I think some, from a young age, I think that's why I was always afraid. I always felt alone because no one gave me that chance to just be like, I'm just here to have a good time. Yeah. <laughs> and I hope everybody gets boba and um, look at me, I can dance. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, I think really like I'm that, that kid, I'm like empty head, no thoughts mm -hmm. in, in a good way mm -hmm. where I'm just here to be present and I'm just here to um, be of any help. Mm -hmm. But because it was always 
I was always thought of in such a negative light because of the way I looked. I think that's why. That's why. Do you mean the way you looked because you were in America? Or what? No, I it just like the, I guess the androgynous, okay. like tomboy look. Yeah. Um, a lot of my uh, uh, my the, my choices of like dressing is literally comfort. Yeah. I I run around all day and I can't do that in a skirt, and it just like became like a okay. I'm just gonna be wearing pants the whole time. Uh -huh. um, I. I always, um, I don't know, it's, it's, I think for me in my head, the reasoning is not very hard, mm. but for, I guess for other people it is hard to understand, which, okay, I'm willing to always under, uh, understand, empathize, and try to explain to that person yeah, yeah. if they were c curious. It's but quite interesting how you knew your, I mean, your sense, like style, but style plays into not just how you look, you know, mm -hmm. it's so much more than that, that you mm. knew that from such a young age. Like, yeah. I, I, I like sports. Yeah. I, I think I, I always just liked being outside and uh, having a challenge in front of me, whether it was uh, growing up, I played uh, sports with my sister. So if she started tennis, I started tennis. If she uh, did started running and I started running too. So um, a lot of those uh, hobbies and like that outdoorsiness always really came from just being with my sister and wanting to be like my sister. Um, she's a lot taller, a lot stronger, and a lot smarter than I am. Uh, to this day, she still is. Uh, but I always felt like in school that because majority of the people that were playing sports and being outdoorsy were guys, mm -hmm. so of course I'm just going to be like, hey, I, I want to play basketball too. Can I play with you guys? Mm -hmm. And it just turned out that way. It wasn't like I wasn't like scheming as a seven-year-old to be like, yeah, I'm going to get in with the guys mm -hmm. and do all these things. I don't know. I've heard stories like that. Yeah. So it's just like, it's not that complicated. It's very chill. I'm here to have a good time. Yeah. I like pants because they're comfy. <laughs> That's it. That's, it's not that yeah. deep. It's, it's really not, not that deep. It's really not that deep. <laughs>In 2022, you also said in an interview that you struggle with imposter syndrome mm. and that you, even at the peak of your career, you didn't feel as though you deserved mm. or were, is that, would that, that yeah. be correct? No, no, you, no, yeah. very much correct. Do I, you feel that way still? I feel like, thank you therapy, thank you to my therapist. Yeah. I love my therapist. <laughs> um, I think the way that I try to look at it now is that, uh, well, number one, the way that people perceive me and the way that people think it's something I can't control. And at that time, if we did win an award, if we were super famous, you know, I'm thankful for that. Um, that I think that's something that will always be there. I feel at the same time, though, I know as a, as a I guess, perfectionist mm -hmm. that I'm never going to be satisfied with the way that I'm doing things. I still to this day feel like, oh, man, I could hit that dance. Um, that that dance move is so much harder. I can do this with different texture. Oh man, if I had time, I could just do this run a tiny bit better. So I think there is that hungry, that hunger, that hungry, that hunger still in my 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 body to just always strive to be a better artist or a better performer. Um, but I do recognize that looking back at that time, yeah, we were we were we were kicking ass. Yeah, yeah <laughs> we we're kicking yeah, yeah, ass, yeah. and you know. Like, Good job, Amber. I just think it's amazing people who do persevere and keep going. Mm. And um, yeah, I just find your story yeah. really, really, uh, you know. Yeah, I, I, one thing that I'm definitely practicing, um, at least in the past year, is, try, is trying to be present. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely not always present in my brain. Um, my manager knows exactly. He's like on the side, just smiling. <laughs> but um, I, I always, tend to really dwell in the past and I always am very anxious of the future mm -hmm. and something that I am always trying to remind myself is be present Amber be present right now it's not about Instagram it's not about like uh, how you're gonna look on this or with this it's about right now about this connection that you can have with somebody shooting this awesome interview in a laundromat let's and there's fortune cookie oh sorry I'm not allowed to say that and there's no, a <laughs> like just being present and like picking up on things and uh, I, I'm really trying to use that to like, okay, like recenter myself. Mm -hmm. And I guess the way that I've, I think still have stayed in this industry is because I am trying to hold on to those present moments. And I was um, reading this book, um, uh, 
It's called The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Yeah, I've heard I, lo it. I love that book. Yeah. I'm not, I, I still need to, I need to reread it sometimes because I need to like refresh my brain. But it was, there's a chapter on like, what are you willing to struggle for? And if, for like my shows and the music that I put out, it, it, it's, the struggle's always worth it. It's like, I'm gonna put hours in like sleepless nights just to work on this. And then I'm going to, fly all around the city and do all these things and the struggle that struggle it's always worth it because for that hour and 30 on, on stage or two hours on stage it's always worth it yeah so do you think that's the reward is being on stage and being yeah there? is that how you yeah. see it and also like when i get when i like when i got to the hotel today i was just like i was like i'm in sydney yeah <laughs> yeah it, this is Cool, okay. Totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, been, it's just like giving myself some time to actually kind of soak it in. Um, 100%. And like every every stop on this tour has been so memorable. We, I've been playing for like some some shows have been like three to 400 people, some have been for thousands. And it's just, the energy is always the same. It's this like burning passion and craziness. Everybody just wants to wild out. And um, I always just hope that that spirit that not only the fans have, but I have my team is that we always have this like fire to just keep wanting to do more and to uh, just have fun doing it. Absolutely, it's such a gift as well, isn't it? Like I always think, what a gift it is not only for the mus the musician themselves to be able to perform and, and allow themselves that freedom, but yeah. also what a gift it is for the crowd and the audience that yeah. you provide to them. Yeah, to have that escapism and that sense of to kind of leave yeah. the world behind for a minute and let's just be here together, yeah. enjoying the music. I don't know, there's something magical about it. There really yeah. is. Like tomorrow we're performing like on a, on a Tuesday. Mm. So it's like middle of the work week. Um, we had a couple of those already and I'm like, you guys gonna be okay for work tomorrow? They're like, we're not going to work. Yeah. And I'm like, you're lying. And they're like, no, we're not going to work. And then everything, everybody leaves and then I cut, run to a couple fans. So like, and they're like, oh yeah, we, we just want to say bye. We have work tomorrow. I'm like, so you lied. They're like, no, we didn't. <laughs> they run away. I reckon you'll yeah. find in Australia some people probably will call. I feel like here people call into sick, uh -huh. like into work sick. I feel like everybody here, people love to party here as well. Yeah. X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. uh, you've said, I'm going to read off my notes yes, for this go, one go so ahead. I get it right. Yeah. Um, X being breaking old habits, mm -hmm. Y questioning your own thoughts at mm -hmm. the time, and then Z being in your own empowerment. Mm. From an outsider looking in on that, mm. it sounds like that to me is growth and personal mm -hmm. growth. Looking back on those works, do you agree that that is like a massive? Like, yeah. Well, I think not only others than story. I'm like, why did I write something like yeah. that? <laughs> I'm like, wow, that was like something that was really going through my head. Uh, I definitely can see from album to album the way that I wanted to switch up sounds and the way that I sang especially was it has my voice has not only changed but the way that I sing has definitely changed mm -hmm. uh, and I always like and then now when I'm performing these because I, I perform from every single one of these albums um, in the new show and I sing it with a different intention now I think okay. um, certain songs like there's a song called hands behind my back that was mm -hmm. off the the X album and um, it's talking about like the chains that held me down and I and I don't and I want to like rise up from that and I want to break free from them but now that I sing that it's like I don't feel those chains at all so it's like really singing that song from a place of like I'm, I am just really looking back and then just also realizing how how free I am now and how like comfortable I feel um, no matter like what what I'm going through I'm just like I'm, I'm chill, it's good. Mm -hmm. um, in the songs like, uh, there's a song called Lately, um, which was a song that I wrote for one of my friends that had passed, um, and that was on the Z album. And when I sing that song um, in the set, it's, every single time, it still feels like, it, it still feels hard to sing. Yeah, right. And But I'm glad that I'm singing it every night because I'm able to sing it not only for him, but also for myself, and just to also really process, like, wow, the memories that I shared with that friend, and what, um, and how that friend has influenced me mm -hmm. through the rest of like throughout my life. I wonder how people can get to that point because for a musician, you can write and you can release mm -hmm. and you can. So I always am so envious of that, you know. Oh. And I've only just started journaling, and I feel like it's funny when you write, all these yeah. thoughts kind of come out in a different mm -hmm. way than you would have. 
initially yeah. maybe thought of them in your head as well? Yeah, you know? it's. I feel like um, this. This was. It was a really cool documentary that I, I that I saw. Um, I feel like it was um, about a thousand miles. Like, mm -hmm. Vanessa it, Carlton. Yeah, yeah Vanessa yeah. Carlton, and she. I think she was. And don't quote me, but I think the intent that she, uh, the intention behind what she was saying was that the song, even though when she first worked on it and then it released and it was this huge hit, it has taken on a life of its own. Mm -hmm. And the way that I see songs like Shake That Brass, which is like my debut single as a uh, solo artist, how that's evolved and it's what, been, wow, almost 10 years since that song released and how much um, the fans have just taken it and just made it their own. Yeah. Um, there's a song called Can't Go Yet, which was off of this No More Sad Songs EP. That song, when I first started writing it, I was like not in a good place. Mm -hmm. And I wrote it and it's about something so sad, but when I started performing it, the fans were just singing it back to me. Mm -hmm. And it just made me think about how, even though that song was just to kind of also, uh, that song was to kind of comfort me and try to like, Tell, like, tell myself, I was like, hey, Amber, like, it's okay, just, you're fine. Mm -hmm. How that song is now sung back at me, mm -hmm. how much more different it feels, and I don't know, it's, I can't really explain, but it's just very surreal, and it's very comfort, it's like a warm hug from all angles, and you're just in like this little comfort ball of hug, nice. huggingness. God, I get so envious. I just dream to be able to experience something like that. Maybe in another When's your life. album coming out? Uh, it's uh, June 22nd. It'll be, yeah. <laughs> it's called My Laundry Lessons. <laughs> <laughs>
that the commerce and the artistry would be a little bit more balanced and equal so that you could still be or so artists can be completely themselves and still be able to make a living doing what they love and being themselves and creating very, very authentic art. Mm, that's a great answer. Yeah. That's really good. <laughs> awesome, amazing. Thank you yeah. so much for joining us no, today. Thank I really, you. Really no, that was fun. It. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can eat the cookie. They're edible. Awesome. Oh, <laughs> I will make a profitable investment. Yay! Wow. <laughs>